what I call mission planning and control of autonomous systems. And that is primarily important for us. In other words, our ability to be, to be able to send a UAV to a specific place, execute a mission, and come back again. Okay? Uh, whatever that mission might be, and as I mentioned at the beginning of my talk, not necessarily a military type of an operation, okay? although that is included, but I am focusing my attention this morning on civilian operations. Okay? So, uh, the primary concept that we are trying to promote in all of our work, as a matter of fact, is the concept of autonomy. Autonomy, of course, is a Greek word, as you know, everything comes from the Greeks nowadays. Right, uh, Professor Mastorakis? Yes. So, uh, indeed, in this particular situation, uh, we are looking to uh, develop uh, routines, software that will execute mission planning and control for us. That is a fundamental ingredient uh, in order for us to be able to uh, come up with uh, something that does not crash but continues to operate. Okay? Uh, for many years now, we have been looking and developing what we call a hierarchical control architecture. Starting from the very low level, where we are looking at ways to uh, change the collective, the cyclic, the throttle, and so forth. Uh, these are, we set up the set points at the very low level of the vehicle. Then we go to the middle level, uh, where we do some of that reconfigurable control that I mentioned before. Uh, here we have object-oriented models, neurofuzzy models, first principle models, and so forth. We do mode switching at this level. And finally, at the very high level, uh, we do data management, sensor fusion, situation awareness. This is where we are looking outside. We collect data with our sensors and we make use of that data, okay? For whatever purpose, you know, uh, we, we have we intended for that, okay? Here's a typical UAV mission, okay? In other words, what we are looking at is that, yes, we have a ground station over here. Uh, this is where the pilot is located, the fellow that's going to operate the UAV and control the UAV. So we start at this point, and then we ask that UAV to follow a particular mission, okay? And say, okay, I want you to go to search area number one. Search area number one, unfortunately, you know, there's no fire, there's nothing there to look at. And we command that vehicle right there at that point to switch and go over to search area number two. Now, this is a very complex type of a task online in real time to be able to reconfigure the mission and to say, to tell that aircraft, the UAV, no, don't go there, but go to area number two. That's not an easy task. I mean, it's a very complex kind of an operation that we are working with. So, in this case, therefore, we go from one vehicle to many vehicles. So, instead of flying just only one of these, we fly multiple vehicles. They might be heterogeneous in nature, you know, not the same kind, all right? So that we combine many of them. We flew about five of them at the same time, executing a particular mission, coordinating those up in the air so that uh, they can behave as uh, a team, you know, rather than an individual vehicle. Software is a, is a key participant in everything that we do with unmanned aerial vehicles. It is a must, in other words, for us, not only to have software on the ground, at the ground station, but also on the UAV, on the aircraft, okay? So it is principally important for us to be able to implement software on the aircraft so that we can command it to go someplace, move from one place to the other, execute a task, look at a target on the ground, if there's a fire there, and report back and so forth. So that's why, you know, this is an important component of the UAV, not only the hardware, but also the software component. Okay. We developed what we call an open control platform. 
This uh, open control platform is a massive operation of software with uh, uh, cooperation with Boeing Aircraft, uh, Berkeley, and many others, Honeywell. Uh, and in this particular effort, uh, the purpose was to come up with a software suite so that automatically we can detect faults on the aircraft, we can do situation awareness, what's happening on the aircraft, high-level reactive control, mode selection, switching, real-time sensor processing, and very importantly, reconfigurable control. In other words, if we want to reconfigure something, we can do so with the software on board the aircraft. Okay? And that is done on the fly. In other words, you know, all of this software takes care of that reconfiguration right on the fly. This has been flown on actual aircraft by a number of companies and the military. It has been flown on this GT Max, our UAV, for many years.